everyone. My name is Cheng Lei from NS Focus Gewu Lab. Uh, I'm very glad to be here uh, in Sweden. You know, in this season, the trees uh, turn to yellow, turn to red, and I think it's very, very beautiful in Sweden this season. And also, I'm glad to be to stand here to share my presentation, attacking PRCs by PRC in deep. So this is my teammates Go Lab from NS Focus. Uh, we are focusing on the attacking and the defending of uh, industrial control system and also IoT device. And thanks for their helping in this research. Without their help, I think I cannot stand here to share this presentation. Now the contents. First, I will introduce some PR, uh, ICS attackings, and then where, uh, I'm talking about the protocols used uh, in PRCs. Uh, in this research, we use Siemens PRCs, Schneider PRCs, and uh, Rockwell Allen Bradley PRC. And basically, on the uh, analysis of the PRC protocols, and finally, we are going to talk how to attack in PRCs by a PRC. Now, f first, first uh, to introduce some ICS IC attacking. Stunk Knight, I think it is it is the most uh, famous real world attacking in the world. I think everybody uh, you, you all you all know know, know this one. And Stunk Knight used uh, Siemens S7 COM protocol for attacking. And PRC blasters is not a real attack. It is presented at Black Hat 2016. Uh, I think it is very, very interesting and uh, attracted me that because in this attacking, uh, uh, the computer is not needed. The worm is just uh, uh, live and run and spread from uh, PRC to PRC without a compu computer. That's amazing. And, and <clears throat> the PRC blaster, they use the uh, Siemens i7 Complex protocol. That is, that is the early i7 Complex protocol with the firmware version uh, 3.0. This means that this protocol only has a session ID and without the encryptions. And Triton, it is a real, real attacking happened last year to a petrochemical plant. Uh, we, we know that this attacking, uh, you use the trace station protocol which is not document public. <clears throat> so uh, there are man <clears throat> there are many uh, attacking based on the protocols. So how to use the protocols to attack attacking ICS ICS devices or IoT devices? I think Ripple attack is the most. Uh, uh, maybe effective way to attack. And if you want to do the Ripple attack, you can have a, a computer, uh, a PRC, of course a switch, and you connect the computer and the PRC together. And first, of course the computer should, should install the configuration and the program software. And use the software, you can send some command to the PRCs, like stop PRC, run PRC, or write read the values of the PRCs. And uh, before, before you send the command, uh, open a packet capture software like Wireshark. You can capture these packets between the computer and the PRC. And after capturing the, after you got the uh, packets, you should analyze these packets and uh, finally send these packets back to the PRCs and the PRCs could be controlled. <clears throat> oh, now we are going to talk about the PRC protocols. First, uh, Siemens PRC protocols. Uh, according to the different protocols used in Siemens PRCs, we separate Siemens PRC into three types. I7-200, I7-300, I7-400, 
they use the i7COM protocol. And this protocol doesn't have any session IDs, doesn't have any encryptions. And also, i7-1200 PLC with the hardware version below 3.0, they use the uh, i7-COM Plus protocol. And it is the early i7-COM Plus protocol. It only has a session ID and a simple algorithm to, to be more security. And the new i7-COM Plus protocols, including some complex algorithm for encryptions, they use the i7 1200 PLCs with the hardware version above 4.0, and also the i7-1500 PLCs. So as for i7-COM protocol, uh, it is Siemens private protocol, but you know, it is not private now. That's because uh, in Wireshark you can you can have the details of this protocol, and also you can download some tools from the open source web, like GitHub or, or any others. You can using this, this you can use these tools to control the Siemens PRCs, which is used as some com protocol. And now, in this presentation, we mainly focus on the new encrypted i 7 Plus protocol. <coughs> oh, so, sorry. It, it, this picture shows the i 7 com protocol uh, packets. From this, from this picture, we could see first is a TCP connection, and then follow the TCP connection is a COTP connection. After the COTP connection, there is a i 7 com connection packets, there is just a one i7-com connection packet. If the connection packet is established successfully, then we can have some function packets like stop PRC, run PRC, or others. So uh, almost the same as the i7-com protocol. i7-com plus protocol, uh, <coughs> the first uh, is the uh, uh, TCP connection and uh, then COTP connection, and uh, follow the COTP connection. It's also the i7 COM plus connection, i7 COM plus connection packets. But there is two i7 COM plus connection packets, and we will we will talk this later. And after the i7 COM plus connection established, then it is the function packet. So we are going to analyze the i 7 Plus protocol. First is the first connection setup request. I just said there are two connection, connection packets. Now let's see the first one. Uh, from this, we can see the protocol ID. It's uh, 772. This means this packet is i 7 Plus protocol. And this is what uh, has been well analyzed by Wireshark. <coughs> and also the PDO type, the data length, the type, the subtype, the sequence number, and the attribute block. Each attribute block begin with A382. And finally, the frame boundary. And after the PRC received, received the first connection request the packet, and the PRC will send the first connection setup response packet to the computer. In this packet, we should notice uh, two. It is uh, the green box, it is the object ID, and the pink box is the connection response value array. This is different in every connection. It is just uh, the random, random that's generated by the PRC. And when the computer received the first uh, connection response packet sent by the PRC, and the computer will send the second connection set of request the packet, from this packet, we should notice that the red block, it is a session ID, and the blue block and the pink block it is the first connection encryption and the second connection encryption. And they are 
all different in every connection packets. So when the PRC received this second connection setup request, the PRC will uh, verify the connection encryption part. If it is correct, then the, the connection will continue. If the PRC find the connection encryption is not, it's incorrect, and the, this connection should be terminated, that means you, can, you cannot go on to send some function packets. And the function packets, here we should notice the, the green box. It is the encryption part. <clears throat> this is the, uh, just as the connection encryptions. It is different in every function packet. So with, with, with this packet, we, we, could, we could see that if you want to communicate with the Siemens PRC using the new encrypted i7 COM plus protocol, you must uh, analyze these encryptions to make sure this encryption is right. So <clears throat> we, we do some reverse, reverse engineering. We use some tools like WinDebug or IDA Pro. We found that <clears throat> these encryptions are, these encryption algorithm are in a DLL file. And we then go on to analyze this DLL file. We found that the first connection, connection packet encryption, <clears throat> oh no, the, the second connection packet encryption, there are two encryptions, if you, if you remember, which we have just mentioned. And the input parameter for this encryption is the first response packet, uh, it's a value array in the first uh, response packet sent by the PRC. It's a random value array. And use this random value array as the input parameter. <clears throat> and use the uh, XOR algorithm. It is very simple, the first one. Use this uh, XOR algorithm, and we can get the first uh, encryptions. Uh, the first it is the uh, uh, the second connection packet's first encryption, and use the result of the first encryption. Uh, use this result as the input, and after uh, a more complex Siemens private algorithm, we call this encryption two, and we finally get the second encryptions in the second connection request packets. Then the the connection the connection part can be done. After that, we are going to analyze the function packet, like run PRC, stop PRC, or write uh, uh, values of, to the PRC. Uh, we found that a constant array with the session ID, the session ID is a random value generated by the PRC in the first uh, uh, response packet. And the constant array with session ID, and uh, after a Siemens private algorithm, we call this encryption three, and we can get a function encryptions. And with this function encryptions, we could send the packets to the PRC to control, to control it, like running it or, or stopping it or others. <clears throat> so th this is Siemens i7 COM plus protocol. I think Siemens did, did, did a lot in the in, the, in their security in their product security <clears throat> because there are private algorithms in the uh, protocols, but maybe it's not enough for someone like me to br break it. So it has still some space to improve. And the Schneider PRC protocols. This is a, a configuration and a programming software for Schneider PRCs. It is Unit Pro. And you use the Unit Pro, we could send some uh, commands to the PRCs. <clears throat> and the same as we just said, and then capture the packets. We found that Schneider PRCs use Modbus TCP to communication, and they use the port 502. And also the, the function code is 90. 90 means this packet is for Schneider PRC's communication. 
in the packets, we found that there is a key, a, a key packet. It is to get the session ID. We send the get session ID packet to the PRC, and the PRC will send back, send back a response pa packet with the session ID in it. In this picture, we could see that is the last one, DF. <coughs> and wrong, wrong PRC packet. In this, in this packet, we could see the DF. The DF is the session ID. This means you, in, the, in this connections, you, you must uh, have the correct uh, session ID, like DF. <coughs> and for for zero, the, the second byte for zero, it is the function packet to run PRC. And also the stop PRC packet, DF is also the <coughs> a session ID, and the second byte for one, it's to run the PRC. And also write DO values. Uh, the, the, fir the first byte is a, is a session ID. Uh, the, 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 this is a different connection, so, so this is a different session ID. Here is 82. And the second byte, 50, it is a function code. That means this packet is to write DO value. And of course, we, we should notice the address and the value. That means to, uh, which address uh, and uh, what value you want to send to the PRC. And uh, Rockwell Allen Bradley PRC protocols. Uh, this is RS Logic X. It is used for uh, ABPRC's configuration and programming. Uh, when we get these packets, uh, between the computer and the uh, PRC, we found that the Rockwell AB PRC use Ethernet IP and the CIP protocols for communication. They use the port 44818. <coughs> so we'll, after that, we are going to analyze uh, what is uh, analyze the packets. We found that. First, first is a TCP connection, and follow the TCP connection. It is the Ethernet IP connection packet. There are uh, four Ethernet IP connection packets. <coughs> Wireshark has has uh, uh, Wireshark has analyzed these packets uh, with the command command byte uh, zero 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 one zero 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 four. 0, 0, 0064 and 0, 0, 0065, it has different meanings, but we should notice the, the last one, the 0, 0, 0065, it is the register session. <clears throat> That's because uh, from this packet, uh, when you send this packet to the PRC, the PRC will respond the packet with a session handle to the computer. And after the Ethernet IP connections, the session ID should be used in the following packets. And after the Ethernet IP connections, it is the CIP connection. Uh, uh, well, no, uh, the first one is the CI, uh, CIP connection manager packet. And from this packet, if you, uh, you just send a request packet to the PRC, and the PRC will send back a response packet. In this packet, there are O2T network connection ID, and the, the, <coughs> this ID will be used uh, in the following CIP connection packet and the CIP function packet. And also the originator series number, it is for <coughs> packet series sequence. And after the CIP connection manager packet, it is the CIP <coughs> connection packets. There are six packets in the CIP connection procedure. We can see that uh, every connection, CIP connection packets, they use the O2T network connection ID and uh, the originator uh, series number from the response of packets of the uh, CIP connection manager packet. From this picture, we could see that in the red block, 
and uh, the uh, green, green block and the blue block, it is that. So after the connection packet established successfully, then we can use some function packets like run PRC, stop PRC, or, or write uh, or read values of the PRCs. First one, it is a, it is a, a run PRC packet. From this packet, we could also see the connection IDs, <coughs> the sequence count, and also the O2T network connection connection ID. And the yellow one, 5501, means this packet is to run PRC. And also the stop PRC packet, it's also almost the same as the run PRC packet. Uh, we should notice that the yellow one, F101, that means this is the stop PRC packet. And also the write digital value packet, <coughs> it's almost the same. But we should notice the, the final four bytes, <coughs> zero, 0100, zero, zero, it is the address, and the, the zero, 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 the, the final two bytes, it is the value. So with the basic knowledge of the <coughs> PRC pro protocols, then we can do the uh, PRC is attacking. Uh, PRC Blaster uh, has proposed a method that uh, a PRC can, a Siemens PRC can use the TCON block and the TDISON block to, has, to establish a TCP connection with other, <coughs> other PRCs. So we, we, use, we use this one. We use TCON to connect, connect a TCP connection to other vendors' PRCs. Like Schneider PRCs, we use the port 502. And for Allen Bradley PRCs, we use the port 44818 for communication. And also, there, are, there is T send block and T receive, T receive block in the Siemens PRCs. T send, P, T send block uh, is, is to send the message. When, when, when the TCP connection is established, the, then the T send block is to send the message to the target, to the target device. And <coughs> T receive block is to receive the message. And we we re, we just uh, say <coughs> we just have the the packets the the protocol message we just uh, mentioned and use them store them in a Siemens DB block, <coughs> then use the T send block to send these packets to other other PRCs to uh, for detection and uh, attacking. And finally, we write some uh, Siemens, Siemens, uh, Siemens programs for detect other PRCs in the net and uh, attack the other PRCs. Just to use the protocols we have already analyzed. So this is the attacking program. Uh, so we can do the live demos. <coughs> and here, here are three PRCs. This is the Siemens 1200 PRC. This is Siemens 300 PRC. And there is a, a Rockwell and Bradley Micrologic uh, 1400 PRCs. <coughs> First, uh, there are only I 7300 PRC and the AB PRC connected. And 
the i7 1200 PLC, it it has has already been injected a worm. Now <coughs> it, it is not connected to the net. And also, I have a command and control server. I write a Python script, PLC hoster. <coughs> so, <coughs> hey, sorry, okay. So I use this Python script to waiting for connections. Normally, <coughs> a CMS PLC will never has uh, we will never connect a TCP connection to any other computers. So in my Python script, there's no connections. And then I will insert the injected i7-1200 PLCs into the net. And when this injected, injected PLC was connected into the net, they, uh, this PRC began to search if there is any other Siemens PRCs. Oh, here it is. <coughs> they, they find this Siemens S7-300 PRCs, and uh, they, <coughs> the, the S7-1200 PRCs just uh, spread the, the worm to S7-300 PRCs. And the i7-300 PRC <coughs> has been injected, and uh, this PRC sends the uh, con uh, this PRC connect to my uh, command and control server, and they, uh, they, this PRC tells me his IP, and uh, he, he, it is a Siemens PRC. And after after that, <coughs> the Siemens i7-300 PRCs begin to search other vendors in the net. If the i7-300 PRC find other vendors' PRCs, <coughs> the i7-300 PRC will send the message back to the CNC server. Oh, here it is. Find the PRC, number two. It is the, the port is 44818. Its IP is 192.168.88150. That means there is a ABPRC in the net, <coughs> and we can I can get the information. The PRC is continuing to find others, but may, maybe there is no more. Okay, scan finished. The target PRCs are as above, so I can select target PRCs to control. I select the number two, the ABPRC, and I can f use some send the function packets like one stop. <coughs> you can see the light is on, and from from this from this screen, you can see that the the wrong light is just uh, <coughs> stop. So we are going to run this PRC again. And I select the AB PRC and I command to run. Okay, this is running. <coughs> and also I can do some write digital values. Number two, write digital values. Now the digital value is, is true and the light, light is flashed. And I just turn off this. It's turned off. The PRC is running. We can see the light. The PRC is running, but this this light is is on. And then we just uh, turn it on. Yes, it has to be controlled. <coughs> this this is that the the i7-300 PRC connect to my computer, and I send a command to the i7-300 PRCs. After receiving the <coughs> my command, i7-300 PRCs will send the, the message to the AB PRCs to control it. OK. 
Okay, I think we can have a <coughs> have this video. It is recorded in our lab. In this video, we has we have ABPRC and Schneider PRCs. It's just uh, almost like this. This one is uh, i7-1200 PRC, and this one is i7-300 PRC. This is uh, ABPRC, and this is the Schneider PRC. First, uh, the, <coughs> the malware injected i7-1200 PRC is not connected into the net. Then we connect this into the net, and it will inject the i7-300 PRCs. The lights, the i7-300 PRCs lights just flashed and the PRC has been downloaded, the, the malware, and it connects to my computer. And then the i7-300 PRCs begin to search the other vendors' PRCs in the net. Oh, there is a PRC. <coughs> it is the Schneider PRC, the port, is, the port number is 502, and also the IP address is sent to, to my computer. And another one, the ABPRC, the port is 44818, and the IP, also as the IP, it is all sent to my computer. The scan finished. Then I could control the above two PRCs. First, I want to control the, <coughs> to attack the Schneider PRC. It's not clear, but the, it is wrong. It says it is wrong. So I send a stop command and it, it is stopped now. You can see the, the light. Oh, th this one, the light. The light is turned off. <coughs> and then we run running the Schneider PRC again and the light is turned on. And we can also just uh, just uh, turn 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 off the light. It's off, and the PRC is still running. So just uh, turn off the light, and then turn on the light. And finally, the AB AB PRC. We just send commands to the Siemens i7-300 PRC and the i7-300 PRC will attack the other PRCs. Just stop PRC, run PRC, and just uh, turn off and uh, turn on the light. Yeah, after the demo, that's uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Impressive demo, really. Thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for showing us this thank scary you. thing. And here's a piece of gratitude. Okay, thank you. Yes. So there are, of course, a number oh, of yeah. questions to this. Uh, interesting questions. Uh, I hope you're ready to answer them. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, are you going to publish the source code of the tools you used in this yes, research? Uh, I want to publish that, but according to our company's policy, I can't do this. That's because my company's policy. Yeah. All right. Were you able to reverse the S7 Plus encryption to decrypt on the fly, or is runtime access to the instance of the engineering station DLL necessary? Uh, I, I, I only reverse the i7 complex protocols encryptions. I, I didn't do any others okay. because in this research, I only need this uh, to analyze the encryptions in the protocols. Okay. 
How is the initial PLC compromised, and what logic or programming language is used to write the malware? Uh, it's just uh, <coughs> the you know Siemens. Siemens use the TI portal to configuration and program. I just uh, use the TI portal to write some <coughs> write the programs and the logic, and y using the uh, I can write write a Python script and. Made the Siemens program into some uh, like some packet. <coughs> uh, I mean, uh, if you want to download the program, you can capture the packets, and the program the program just uh, it's uh, the the packet in the packets, and the, you you use these packets and send it back to the PRC. It's just okay. Right, but uh, but uh, do you have to have different code sets for different PLCs, or can you use the same malware payload for all of them? Uh, you have to have different payloads. In my right? lab, we only have these three, three kinds of PRCs. Yes. I think other PRCs may affect, I think. Yeah, but are you using the same payload exactly for all these three? No, that's no. because our lab only has these PRCs. Yeah, yeah, okay. How long did it take you to make the, this proof of concept working, to work? This may be uh, one year. Maybe By one. you only or together? Uh, together. So we are a team. And of five, four, five, three, how many people? Maybe two or three people. Two or three Maybe. people, so yeah. two or three man years. Yeah. Okay. Do you use your custom Wireshark dissectors for S7 COM Plus or the, the one which is not complete available on GitHub? No, I just use the Wireshark available on the GitHub. Okay, so the oh. one that's already available. Yeah, yeah. Right, thank you. So are you uh, actually showing us how easy it is to attack one PLC using another PLC uh, over the poorly uh, designed protocols? Uh, yes. <coughs> yes. <coughs> yes. 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 Uh, yeah, no, that's what we're afraid of. <laughs> but but I, I, I think, <coughs> I think the, the PLC, pro the industry, I see as protocols Needs, still needs to be improved in the for uh, their security. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we can all agree on that, I think. So we have time for a few more. Um, will this wor work on the S7-1500 as well? I think maybe, but in, in our lab, we don't have S7-1500 PRC, so we are not able to have a test. I think it, <coughs> it's just uh, the same, maybe. Yeah, all right. And I have one more, but you already answered that one. So thank you so much for this impressive demonstration. Thank you. Very good.